Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing diamond black fan anemia and how it pertains to macrocytic anemia. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mad Medicine, we have a complete playlist for the hematology oncology section that you can go check out for step one. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because your support will really help us out. With that being said, let's talk about macrocytic anemias. These are anemias that are classified by an MCV that is greater than what 100. Remember, normal MCV is 80 to 100, and in this case, you're going to have a large red blood cell, and thus your MCV, your mean corpuscular volume, is going to be greater than 100, as we have shown with this arrow pointing to a large red blood cell. Now, the MCH and MCHC are usually going to be normal to high, depending on uh, the situation, honestly. And uh, you can subdivide macrocytic anemias based off of megaloblasts. So you can have megaloblastic anemias where you have nuclear deficits, which are leading to a macrocytic anemia, and you can have non-megaloblastic anemias. So let's talk a little bit more about those. Megaloblastic anemias are caused by nuclear deficits that can occur due to defective DNA synthesis or repair. Now we have talked about all of these issues in our previous video, so you can go check them out. Today we're going to be talking about diamond black fan anemia, which is a non-megaloblastic anemia. There is nothing wrong with the nuclear deficit or nuclear uh, uh, repair or synthesis. In this case, there's no deficit in the DNA is essentially occurring because of other reasons that we're going to talk about. We are not going to cover liver disease and alcoholism, even though we have covered them previously in the previous video. So uh, it's pretty straightforward in that sense. Let's talk about diamond black fat anemia now. This is a autosomal dominant disorder. Remember we talked about erotic aciduria in our previous video? That was a autosomal recessive disorder. Well, diamond black fan is a autosomal dominant disorder in which you have erythroid aplasia uh, that presents in infancy. So most people with diamond black fan anemia, DBA, are going to present as an infant, and that's usually the classical presentation you're going to see on step one. Now, uh, this can be caused, this autosomal dominant uh, erythroid aplasia can be caused by genetic mutations that affect ribosome synthesis, right? This doesn't have anything to do with DNA synthesis. Rather, this has an issue to do with ribosome synthesis. And uh, what's going to end up happening is you're going to see a perpetual activation of the TP53 or the P53 gene, which is a tumor suppressor pathway. Now, DBA, diamond black fan anemias, are also associated with cancer, right? If the TPA gene is uh, not functioning properly like it should, you can see you're going to have a high rate of cancer occurring in these patients. And that can include AML, any myelodysplastic syndromes can occur, colon cancer, genital cancers, and osteosarcomas can also occur with, in patients who have diamond black fan anemia. When it comes to your findings, uh, there are several things you should know that are very, very important for step one because they should clue you into diamond black fan anemia. Number one, you should see macrocytic megaloblast, non-megaloblastic anemia. That's very important, right? The macrocytic part you're going to know is uh, is very broad. It could be anywhere from folate, vitamin B12, erotic acid urea, even to uh, diamond black fat and liver disease. Anything can be causing this macrocytosis. But the key giveaways are going to be that you have no hypersegmented neutrophils, right? In megaloblastic anemias, megaloblastic anemias, you're going to see positive hypersegmented neutrophils. In this case, in non-megaloblastic anemias, you're going to see no hypersegmented neutrophils, which should clue you in to either diamond black fan or liver disease. Very, very high yield. You're also going to see an increase in hemoglobin uh, F percentage, but a decrease in total hemoglobin because uh, this is an anemia after all. 50% of these patients actually have congenital abnormalities, and this is the finer, final kicker. Okay, this is also very high yield along with uh, hypersegmented neutrophils, non, no uh, hypersegmented neutrophils. This is very important because if you see these two findings, this should highly clue you into diamond black fan anemia. If you see cranial facial malformations, cardiac defects, cleft palate, but the real kicker is going to be limb abnormalities like tie, uh, triphalangeal thumbs. What is triphalangeal thumbs, you may be asking? It's right here. As you can see, the thumb looks like every single other uh, 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 finger, right? It doesn't look like a thumb itself. It looks like a finger. This 
finding right here should clue you into diamond black fan anemia if you have no hyper segmented neutrophils and positive macrocytic anemia occurring okay this is a high yield high yield association with diamond black fan anemia essentially there's nothing else in step one that should remind you of triphalangeal thumbs other than diamond black fan anemia i cannot i cannot uh, state this enough so i'm just gonna write in very thick font or whatever high yield so do not forget this and uh, when it comes to diagnosis and treatment of di uh, diamond black fin anemia, you're going to see a lot of these patients presenting at an infant uh, age, right? They're going to be less than one year old because that's when these presentations start coming up. You'll see non, uh, non megaloblastic macrocytic anemias with no other significant uh, cytopenias occurring and no other uh, findings in the blood. You will see reticulocytopenia, reticulocytes will be present. Uh, um, and uh, you'll see normal marrow cellularity without erythroid precursors. So you're not going to see erythroid precursors occurring, and that's why you see erythro uh, sorry reticulocytopenia. I, I made a mistake. I said that uh, you're going to see reticulocytes present. You're not going to see reticulocytes present because you're not going to have erythroid precursors. That was a mistake that came out of my mouth. I just want to uh, correct that really quickly. Now, 20 to 25 percent of these patients are going to be identified via a mutation in the R. PS19 gene. Just good to commit this to memory. There's no easy way of remembering this, in my opinion. Uh, you just have to remember RPS19 occurs with diamond black fan anemia. Now, really quickly, the way I like to remember the high yield findings of diamond black fan anemia is simply with uh, bullet points. Diamond black fan anemia is a autosomal dominant disorder okay, that occurs with issues in ribosomes okay ribosome synthesis now that is the main issue you can see an RSP 19 gene mutation like we said right here you'll see positive macrocytic anemia but you'll see uh, let's just erase that and you will see no uh, hyper segmented neutrophils and then you will see uh, developmental defects like the thumbs okay like the triphalangeal thumbs Essentially, if you see these presentations, you're dealing with diamond black fan anemia. That's essentially how I remembered it because there's not much to diamond black fan anemia other than these uh, key facts. When it comes to treatment, you can give corticosteroids and blood transfusions and uh, hematopo uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplants can also be given after uh, steroid, given to patients who are not uh, improving with steroids. So if you have a patient who you give corticosteroids but they don't improve, you can do a cell transplant with hematopoietic stem cells. And with that being said, that's everything you need to know for diamond black fan anemia. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you guys want us to cover a specific topic, leave a comment below. Let us know. You can follow us on social media right here. And you can listen to these podcasts on your favorite uh, uh, podcast service provider for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.